they're an old technology that really have not been updated at all since they first showed up 130 years ago. But what people don't really understand is that that technology was not just specific to San Francisco. It was in dozens of places throughout, North, throughout uh, America. Uh, they had five, over 500 miles worth of cable cars transporting millions of people per year in places as far north as Chicago and St. Paul. The industry has really for the last hundred years been centered on the, the ski resort industry. Um, so the entire mentality that exists there is different. You're, you're not dealing with things like traffic, you're not dealing with 24-hour service, you're not dealing with all these variables, uh, government, bureaucracy, all these things, you're not dealing with those things in a ski resort situation. The planning, the transit planning industry knows very little about, about cable and the cable industry knows very little about transit planning. So what I'm trying to do is, is get, the, get the two to actually be able to communicate with one another and understand one another because I think both have a lot that they could learn from, from each other. What I think is most important is that it can offer less than a minute wait times between vehicles. Not only that, they're reliable wait times. So you don't have to worry about schedules, which, uh, as anyone in transit will tell you, scheduling is very costly, it's not particularly efficient, and more often than not, schedules aren't often adhered to. So that's probably one of, if not the most important advantages the technology presents. So I think the attraction of a cable system is it's much lighter weight infrastructure. The, the, you know, the, the, the towers to hold this thing and the cables and so forth are, are, are much uh, lower profile, presumably lower cost. They might do very well in terms of reliability because you're getting them out of the street. And in particular, they're jumping over the intersections. They're not getting, so they only have to stop when they have to serve passengers. People want to get on and off. We are very interested in this. This is something that we've, we've, we've become interested in the last little while. I have colleagues here in the University of Toronto who uh, uh, would love to look at this in more detail. Um, and we're also talking to partners outside the university. The Ontario Centers of Excellence has gotten interested in this question. So I think, I think this is something that has some traction and we'll see where it goes over the next, next little while. Because the system is fully automated, you eliminate human error. You don't eliminate humans, you still have operators and you still have attendants in the stations. You can even have attendants in the vehicles. And that's important for, from a safety perspective. But what you don't have is you don't have the human error and the human factor that not only occurs with drivers of the vehicles, but more importantly, that occurs with cyclists, pedestrians, red lights, and crossings and intersections. So you eliminate all of those problems. Um, Innsbruck, Austria is one of the most fascinating ones. It's, it's something called a, a hybrid funicular, which is a bizarre combination of a funicular and a gondola system. And what that enables you to do is, no matter what the inclination of the vehicle is, you're always sitting perfectly straight up. So that allows it to do very sharp descents underground and sharp ascents up above ground. It's a very interesting system. I would love to see it in Toronto because it's my hometown. And, and I think the Don Valley Corridor is an exceptional opportunity that we've not really utilized effectively. We have so many underserviced communities in those areas, Leaside, Thorncliffe, uh, Flemington Park, Don Mills, those are all areas with huge numbers of population but very poorly serviced by transit and we have this opportunity here to connect them and to connect them quickly, cheaply and easily. So yeah, I would love to see it in Toronto. But at the same time what I'm beginning to realize is enough cities around the world are beginning to pick up on this and enough are beginning to implement it as transit that it's a snowball effect and over time there's going to be more cities in North America that adopt this. They just have to figure it out and have to understand it. Whether that's going to be Toronto or not, that, that's, not my, that's not my decision, it's Toronto's.